Our liberties, I would argue, are really being eroded at a rapid speed. Uh, I wonder about your thoughts. Um, well, I don't think our liberties have been eroded in terms of controlling an, ep an epidemic that you know, took the world by storm and has killed millions and millions of people around the world. I think the government was far too slow to react in the you first place. You surprise me. Why? Because I actually genuinely do believe that I, I was originally quite in favour of lockdown. I was terrified of COVID. I was pregnant when it first happened. I was absolutely terrified. And I was one of those annoying people that was shaming people uh, for going into the park in the summer. I was like, look at those people in the park. You're not supposed to be doing this. I was furious. But now, and particularly when I think about things like this so-called Plan B, Luke's saying he doesn't really see it as an infringement on himself. Uh, I do. I think it's absolutely appalling. Well, do you think it's an infringement to put safety belt on when you get in a car oh i think that's a ridiculous analogy i think that's absolutely people throw this analogy at me all the time but going into a car a fast moving vehicle and applying a safety measure that's been tried and tested over godness knows how many years to protect yourself you against have, something you that will directly hurt you to... is not the same thing is it come on well i think it is i mean my i have no a you don't how can you think that because it's it's being sensible you know we have managed to get the only thing we've eradicated through vaccination is smallpox we still have got many many diseases that kill people hundreds of thousands millions of people but we take the vaccination if we're going on holiday where we need to have yellow fever let's say um, That's a bit different to going to, say, going on holiday, going to a foreign country and taking a tried and tested vaccine. That's very different to taking a new form of vaccine, for example, to go to your local pub. Well, it's, I don't think it is. I mean, I don't think it's really that hard for people to do something to try and protect other people. I think the seatbelt analogy really falls down because there are absolutely no unintended consequences whatsoever to wearing a seatbelt when you get in a car. I mean, at most you might get a little sore spot on your but shoulder, but, but we are still living now with the unintended consequences of the last lockdown. When you look at the costs that have taken place to mental health, the loss well. to children's education, the problems we've got with the supply chain, even people's waning immune um, to things like flu. We didn't get colds or flu for a year and we're now living with the consequences well, of all the of this. The, the reason why we have so many huge NHS waiting lists now is because people stopped going to the doctors for a year. So we're not dealing with all of those unintended consequences before we're now arguing for piling on well, more I no, I restrictions. Don't, I don't think anybody's arguing for mm. piling on more restrictions, but it is quite clear that the figures are increasing and yes, Which figures are increasing? The figures of, of infection rates. But, but that's because a lot of the, we're increasing... Uh, if you absolutely. actually compare the yeah, amount the of tests, tests we yeah. do compared to the amount no, of tests absolutely. that we used to do... Number, the number of deaths are increasing. But the number of deaths is gradually creeping up. I mean, the concern for the health service is that the combination of flu and normal winter things, plus the enormous backlog um, of operations and normal, you know, or emergency or elective treatment that hasn't been done... The NHS doesn't have finite resources. The NHS is actually about people. And, you know, what you say, Joanna, about, you know, if the NHS isn't looking after us, we need to ask questions. My son's a paramedic who has worked his socks off over the last 18 months and didn't see his family at all for the first three months of, of lockdown. I mean, there are people who are on their knees Absolutely. through exhaustion. And they don't get to say, OK, we've got COVID now. Now we'll all have a break. And then we'll deal with, no. you know, strokes, heart attacks. And I absolutely take cancer. my hat off to people like that. I have members of my family who work for the NHS and have busted a gut over the past 24 months as well. But I think we need to look at why aren't other countries then having quite the same problems? What are they doing well, differently Latvia with their... Today well, has and just we can always point in. to countries that are doing worse, but there are also an awful lot of countries around Europe that are doing phenomenally better than us. Why does Germany have... To, I think it's... I think, to I think, 10 times the number of intensive care beds that we have. I think mask wearing is still much more prevalent in those yeah. countries. Not in Sweden, not in Denmark, not in Norway. Well, that fear's just imposed a month-long lockdown. Um, yes, there, of course, there are protests around Europe. I mean, this is a problem worldwide. Figures are going up in Russia. Uh, figures are going up all over the world. And there are, we've seen what happened in Israel, which, again, was sort of leading the way. Um, at the beginning and then had to impose another lockdown. What we are seeing in this country is that we were way ahead on the vaccine. And, you know, hats off to everybody who made that happen. 
um, particularly the people who developed it and the, the, chemi uh, the pharmaceutical companies working together. But to a certain extent, that's lulled people into a full sense of security, I think. And you hear people saying, oh, I've been double jabbed, I'll be fine, I don't need to wear my mask. Because what I think about the person real... you're sitting opposite? I think